Good afternoon and welcome to Fur, Fins, and Feathers. Before we start our show today, I would like to thank all the many people who have generously offered suggestions, talked about the show, and promoted it uh, with some great ideas that we hope to incorporate in the coming weeks and months. Today our guest is Bonnie Johnson of Dartmouth and her daughter, Taylor Wood who is also a Rhodesian Ridgeback enthusiast. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Very nice to have you. And we have Gina, Bella, and Pirate here. Who love Ridgebacks. And they're, they're going to be turning around and showing everybody. They, they, uh, they're getting Come into this. This Come is on. a lot of fun for them. Jeannie. Come here. Come here. Turn around. We're going to see some... Give me treat. Some treats, and we are going to see some, uh, oh, somebody wants a snack. Come here. Now turn around. Here we go. Three lovely Rhodesian <laughs> Ridgebacks. Good dog. Very good. Bonnie, how did you get interested in the Ridgeback? So, right fresh out of college, my husband at the time had looked into Ridgebacks, and he took me to the mall in Kingston, where they happened to have a ridgeback that was the color of a white mariner, but it had a ridge, and obviously we didn't buy a pet store puppy. We left the puppy there, sadly, but we bought the book. And we found a breeder about six months later, waited until we had purchased our first home, and went up and got our first ridgeback. And the rest is history. And the rest is history. I didn't really have any interest in having a puppy at the time, but we brought him home and within a month he was my dog. And then I made the mistake of going to a dog show. Okay. And then the rest was history because I thought my dog was so much better than everything else in the ring. As we you know, all like been we there all do. and done that. Yeah. And uh, you've had a very interesting uh, journey with Ridgebacks, haven't you? Yep. I've, I've had some How many champions good times. have you had? I have, I think I just finished my 51st champion. That's quite a record. It, it's pretty good. Very, very and most good. of them I've shown myself. I've had a few people help finish their own dogs. You've exhibited Most of them I show myself. All over the country. All over the country. Yep, Pirate's been to a national specialty in California. He's been to... Pennsylvania, I think Kentucky, New York for Westminster. That's quite an enviable record. Hey, don't you know. Can you tell us about the Ridgeback? What's the history of the breed? So they were originally bred to hunt lions and <clears throat> mm -hmm. the native people had a, a ridged wild dog that almost looked like a little bit dingo looking okay. hot, hot and hot dog and okay. they they interbred with all the dogs the english brought to south africa and rhodesia so they were mixed. now zimbabwe now zimbabwe yeah. so they were mixed with things like greyhounds and mastiffs and bulldogs and probably pharaohs who knows what else and so i've even read where they have had some uh, interbreeding with dalmatians way back Probably, and our standard is based on the Dalmatian standard, so we're almost like a, a stand, a Dalmatian just blown up a little bit. You could picture them with spots. Talk about their ridge. That's a fascinating it is. chapter of the history. Most of them are born with a ridge. We do still get dogs without ridges. Come here, Bella. Come here. Now, Bella has a beautiful ridge. I don't know if people can see it, but the ridge is supposed to start up above the withers. Okay. Go to the hips. In this shape, have two whirls. The whirls aren't supposed to be any further than a third down the ridge, and they're supposed to have two of them that are relatively symmetrical. Okay, and it's a reverse, isn't it? Yes. The okay. hair grows in reverse. The hair grows yep. in reverse. And the whirls One color. Can they are a single color breed. Yep. They can have some white 
on the okay. toes and the chest, a little on the belly. Okay. But nothing excessive. We prefer not to have the weight up over the feet, up past the pasterns. What are, now, th your dogs are primarily confirmation. Primarily confirmation and we lure course as well. Talk about the lure coursing, that's fascinating. <clears throat> so the lure coursing is a sport where the dogs compete against each other. They run in trios. They originally have to start. We start by practicing them one at a time. They run a course that's at least 600 yards. It has to have so many turns and they're judged on how, and they use a continuous loop for the course. That's Bella, okay. don't jump. That's all right. And they chase. I think Bella wants to come home with me. That's she wants all right. to come up in your lap. That's what okay. She wants. So tell her <laughs> about getting back into the lure coursing. So they chase a white plastic bag that's pulled on this continuous loop course, and they're judged on how fast they are, how well they follow the bag, their agility. She's just she's a investigating. Wander. She's investigating um, their agility, their enthusiasm. And it's great fun. The dogs love it so much. You get out there and you see them. The minute they get out of the car in the field and see that bag, you have to hold on for dear life because they'll drag you right out there to get it. They think it's the greatest fun to chase well, that thing. Horsing has gained pri uh, popularity in this country. It has, yeah. And it's one of the most popular performance sports. What are some of the other breeds, uh, hound breeds? These are all sight hounds. Yep, these are all sight hounds. So there's two different types of coursing now in the country. Okay. Originally, it was just for sight hounds. Okay. So you had your and Ridgebacks were a little controversial when I first started doing it. We had just been allowed to start lower coursing, yeah. so we weren't very welcome. But it, it was historically breeds like greyhounds, whippets, borzoi, um, abies and hounds. Basenjis, Aswaks, Wolfhounds, Pharaoh Hounds, Scottish Deer Hounds. I'm sure I'm forgetting something. No, that's all right. But what? what <laughs> she's that's okay. <laughs> she's having fun. And what, what? What? Now you said there is a different. So, a couple of years ago, they came out with what's what they call a cat test, a coursing ability test, and that's open to all breeds because. Oftentimes, we'd have other breed dogs come and want to join us, and we couldn't let them enter because they, they weren't allowed. So now we have the cat, which they don't run in trios. They just do a single run. I wonder if someday they'll bump it up to run in trios, but that's not, I, don't, I haven't heard any talk of that at this point. And all the other breeds seem to love it as much as we do. So it's great fun. Very, very interesting. We're hoping to have a practice in Dartmouth. You had one with last any, year yeah, that I went to. Luck in that April. was really, really fascinating. Yep, same place. We're going to try to do another one this spring. That's really interesting. That should, uh, we, we'll tell our uh, people out in the community to uh, we'll let them uh, be aware of the. Uh, the trials and how interesting they are, and people can just go and enter and just have fun. Yep, you can enter. You can even enter the day of. Very, very good. Now, Taylor, what do you do? What What is your role in this? You are the puppy. Uh, what do you do with the with mom and the dogs? Um, I do junior handling, and that's how's that? It's basically, just showing for children. <coughs> And that's simple as it gets. Hey, are you, is this a new pursuit for you? Yes, I just uh, started recently. And how's that going? It's going okay, I'd say. Have yeah. you won any ribbon chat? In second place, yes. That's nice. <laughs> that's very good. And there'll be a lot of shows coming up this year. Mm -hmm. That'll be very, very good. <laughs> this is classic Ridgeback. They, <laughs> They're going to be throwing us out of the chairs and and putting themselves in them if they they're allowed so to. So you you've bred fifty over fifty champions. Yes, I have. We usually have a litter or two every year. We have puppies coming up at the end of 
February with this one. Gina, why don't you come out here? Gina, come in. Come over here. Is Gina going to be a mother? So this is Jeannie, and she's going to be a mom. We're pretty sure she's going to be a mom at the end of February. Now, was she a champion? She is a champion, and she's had puppies before. She had our best puppy from the litter that she had last year is now living in Russia. She went to a family in Russia who's gotten a couple of dogs for me over the years, and she shows them in all the European countries and law courses them over there. And she has a photographer friend of hers who's a, a dog photographer who follows her all over Moscow, taking the most amazing pictures and putting them on Facebook. It's kind of cool. So this is really an international sport. It is. It is. You, you must have sent dogs to other countries? Russia is actually the only country I have sent dogs to. I've had friends that have sent dogs to some of the South American countries that I think some of his puppies um, to Puerto Rico and Colombia. But me personally, I've just sent to Russia. Have you, are you a judge? I am not a judge. Would you like to be a judge at some point? <clears throat> With 51 champions, I, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm going to do my first sweeps judging assignment this summer, and we'll see and how that it feels. Gonna be? It's going to be at one of the New York supported shows. Nice. Yeah. Where it, Now, there is a very active uh, Rhodesian Ridgeback Club where? We have is, a, it, is there one in New England? We have a New England club, and we have a national club. I'm the president of the New England club currently. Um, and what does that involve? A lot of work, but it's good. We do a lot of things locally. Every, last summer, we did our first event at the Washburn Park in Marion. Nice. We did our summer event there nice. in the, the, the horse ring that's yeah. like into the ground. Yeah. It made a perfect dog pen. So we, we put up some additional fencing so the dogs couldn't get out of it and had probably had 30, 40 Ridgebacks running around there for the afternoon, had a little cookout and a meeting. It was a good time. What are some of the other activities that Ridgebacks can participate in? So our, our next club event is we're going to be doing the Canine Good Citizen Test, and that's open to all breeds. And <clears throat> a lot of insurance companies are starting to want that to keep your insurance prices down. and it. Gina, it puts the dogs through some simple obedience tests to, you know, just determine that they have good manners and they behave themselves responsibly. So we do that. We How are they in obedience? How I was just going to say, we've done some obedience. There's a few members of the club that do obedience. I personally don't have the discipline to practice. I'm just not one of those people that will go out and practice 10 minutes every day, so. I know somebody who just got involved in another breed in dock diving. Oh, how are these, right. How are the Ridgebacks with dock diving? I haven't seen a Ridgeback do dock diving yet. Okay. I think. And Ridgebacks personally, don't I think like it's water. More, they don't like water, do they? So I think that. I'm sure there's some that would do it. But he'd, I think a lot of the problem. He'd rather die than get his feet wet. He doesn't like to get his feet wet, <laughs> but I think a lot of them like uh, like to participate in sporting more type of yeah. events. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of people are doing rally. A lot of people are doing agility. Nose work. Talk about nose work. I don't know anything about nose work. From what I've seen, they're just as good as nose work as any other breed. Her brother, Gina's brother, her owner, who actually owns the soggy doggy that yeah. is on the shirt, she does a lot of nose work with him, and she she's I, doing nose work right she's here. She's doing nose work right here. Yep, she's checking out everything. So what is nose work? So they they teach them on three different scents. Now I've never done it myself, but I've watched her do it, so I might not get all my facts perfect. But they, they start out using like a niece and a couple other f scents, and they stick to those scents. And, you know, they set up really simple little practice exercises initially, and 
and make it harder as they go. And one of the videos she posted that I remember watching last year is they put the scent up somewhere and the dog walks into the room and he's air scenting until he found it. And he found it. It, it was just the coolest thing to watch. It's very good. It's amazing what they can do with their noses. Now you, you also, on your shirt yeah. here, you promote a charity. So it's not me that promotes it, but my friend owns the Soggy Doggy in Norwood, and every fall she does a breast and show walk to raise money for Susan Coleman, and we have a ton of Ridgebacks that show up for that. So that's a very worthwhile it uh, is. Uh, event. Yeah. And a lot of fun? It is. <laughs> yep. Very, very good. The week after next, we'll be heading to Westminster. Talk about, now you've exhibited at Westminster. I've exhibited at Westminster quite a few years this year. Two of my dogs are entered. I'm not showing them. Other people are. The, well, the dog that I entered to Will show you? myself is pregnant, so uh, she's, no, she's not, so gonna she's be there. not going. Will um, you, do you have a professional handler? So one of them has a professional handler. She's, I co-own her. And the other one is being shown by her co his co-owner. It's um, Gina's half brother Illusion is going, and a girl named Lila is going, and we're, you know we're hoping they'll do great. How have you done at Westminster over the years? I've never won anything at Westminster. We always have a humongous entry. Like we're the second biggest entry at Westminster. We have 41 Ridgeback Center That's this year. That's a big year. crowd. It's a big crowd. Um, so maybe this year will be the year. You know, uh, by the time rest, by the time this sh the ne for the next uh, show here, we will have passed Westminster. Yeah. So talk about Westminster. People who might want to. To tune in and uh, so Westminster is talk about Westminster. Westminster is a project. <laughs> it's it's a lot of fun. They they split the judging up these days. So what you see on TV at nighttime is all the dogs that have won the breed showing in the groups. But during the day, we're down on Pier 92 and 94. And that's all been split. That we're not at the garden anymore. We're not at the garden anymore, which is a good thing. There just wasn't enough room for the for the dogs and the crowds. I remember Ugh. battling. Yeah, I was. It the, was not uh, fun. Probably, I think it was with him when he was like two years old, and they had to shut it down and have let people leave because the the temperature had gotten up to 100 degrees just from the crowds. You couldn't move in there. I remember that being the most uncomfortable yep. venue that I had ever gone through. Mm -hmm. I and went upstairs into the bleachers yeah. and watched from up above. Because you, you couldn't, couldn't even walk. get down on the floor. Yep, you couldn't go anywhere. It was not fun. It was not fun. So with the piers, we have a lot more room. There's room to talk to the crowds. They can move through and see the dogs. The rings are bigger. So it, it's nice. It's what's called a bench show. So we have to bring all our stuff in. They, they give us a slot yeah. on a bench. Uh, on a bench. Where every dog gets their own slot. And so the 41 Ridgebacks will be all next to each other in one big line. We'll hang out for the day talking to the public and the crowds and showing our dogs off. That's the biggest part of Westminster is going and socializing and seeing everybody and the talking to The camaraderie is always yeah. great. I mean, you're in the ring for, you know, two minutes. Three minutes. Yeah. At best. So. And hopefully, you might win a ribbon. And you or might something. win a ribbon, yeah. And I shouldn't say, I've won in the classes. I haven't won the breed. I got winner's bitch at the garden last year. Um, That's an honor in itself. It is. Yeah. You get the nice, fancy ribbon. And I think I got something that the, the year before, I think I was reserved with. The, they started allowing the classes to be shown, the yeah. non-champion dogs. Yeah, they went back to that. <clears throat> so, But to get to even a ribbon yeah. at uh, I mean, you have a, to at least at a have a venue. major to be there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, is a real honor. It is. 
and to get that much recognition. Yeah. And you uh, you thrust into the national spotlight. Yep. Very she got interviewed by Fox one year when she was about this big at the Hotel Pennsylvania. That must have been fun. Yeah, I don't remember it all too well. I remember the cameraman and that's about it. Now you also have a beagle, don't you? Yes. Talk about your family beagle. I showed her for like a year, right? What is her name? Her name is Squiggly. That's cute. <laughs> yeah. Um, I showed her for like a year, but she didn't like it, so we stopped and now she doesn't really do anything but to Is she a couch best. potato? I wouldn't say that. She's very active, but she stays at home. Well, she's How does she get along with the Ridgebacks? <laughs> it, it differs on the day and the Ridgeback. Sometimes she loves them. Sometimes she hates them. She's a Ridgeback herder, kind of. Yeah. Like we say, hey, you want to go E-A-T? If I say it, they'll, you know, respond. Yes, um, of course. But I say that at home, and all my dogs head out the door to where we go out to feed them in the kennel, and the beagle starts doing circles, biting ankles, and she's too fast, and she barks and she grabs them, and they get mad, and they go after it, and she runs the house. So she's the ruler of the she roost. She is the ruler of the Ridgeback Roost. Yes. She is. You should tell him about when Dogs 101 came to the house and you were on Dogs 101. I don't remember that. You don't remember it? I mean, I do, but not fully. I was like three or two. So Dogs 101 came out to the house and took video of the puppies back well, she was about 11 years ago. She was like three. And, okay. you know, it wasn't a lot of tape, but she made it on. So she's on Dogs 101 with the puppies. Speaking of these dogs, what should a person look for in a Ridgeback? We should reverse the question. What should a Ridgeback look for in a person? Okay. And Ridgebacks are, are really strong, willful, independent-minded dogs. So you have to be kind Hello of there. a strong personality. Okay. If, if you're a real wimpy, not leadership type of person, they will walk all over you. And so you really have to let them know who's running the show. I mean, not that you have to be harsh, but you, you just have to be the one running the show or being their leader. Um, otherwise, they'll do it for you. Are they a good family dog? They're a great family dogs. You, you have to socialize the heck out of them when they're puppies with anything you want to do for their entire life, you do in the first six months. Expose them to tons of kids, tons of other dogs, especially other dogs, because they're, they're a more, um, more aloof breed than some breeds. Like, so they're not great dog park dogs. You take a ridge back to the dog park and like the first silly lab that jumps on its head without, ask, without asking will get flattened. They, you know, they, they're just more aloof. They demand respect from other dogs. They want to be greeted respectfully and calmly. And, you know, don't really like all that silly lab stuff. They're a little more serious breed than that. They need to get a good amount of exercise every day. Um, people that come to me for puppies, there's puppyhood and there's adulthood. And they're so drastically different. That How you, so? They're crazy puppies. Crazy, crazy puppies. And then you flip a switch at some point around a year and a half old, and all of a sudden, they're calm, well-behaved adults that turn into couch potatoes. And they're perfectly happy to get up and go do whatever you want to do when you want to do it. But as long as they've gone out and gotten a little exercise in the morning, the rest of the day, they're content to just hang around the house and behave themselves, which I think is what appeals to a lot of people about them. They don't need to be entertained 24-7. Are they good? Uh 
for a single uh like for a single owner they can or be. do they need to the companionship of <coughs> I think another dog i think they do best in pairs okay but i know tons of people that have single dogs and as long as you know you provide enough activity in their life they're fine males or females i prefer females i think people that come to get puppies probably go for males more often why is or that initially people want for their first dog people want a male I think it's the visual. I think everybody, when they're introduced to a Ridgeback, they see, you know, a big, strong, strapping male on the internet, and that's what they want. But that's not always the most appropriate thing for them. You know, like a little 90-pound girl probably would do better with a girl. Very good. And I think families with young kids, which I often discourage from getting a Ridgeback, period, but if they why persist. Do you, why do you discourage? Ridgebacks are tough puppies. And I found most So they wouldn't people, be good for a young kid. I, tr I try to get people to wait until their kids are over six. Okay. Now other breeders are perfectly comfortable with any age, but it has to be the right family, the right person. And it's, it's really, it's really hard to tell which which person. There's so many people that what I run to run into frequently. The most problematic puppy buyer is the husband that wants a dog, and the wife has no interest, but she's the one home with the dog and the kids. And we see that very frequently. The guy will come with his wife. Gung ho, and he Gung wants ho, a dog. Gung ho, he wants his dog. He's convinced her she wants a dog, and you really, really have to dig to see if she really wants the dog, because that is the circumstance under which I've gotten dogs returned the most frequently, is the wife just couldn't handle it. She's the one you home. You bring the whole family to meet the Absolutely. dog? Absolutely, yes, yep. And what's that process involved? So I want everybody that's going to get a dog for me to come and see them a couple of times. I usually, like, since I know I have puppies coming at the end of February, I'm starting to have people come now to meet all the girls. And so I can get an, an idea how their kids behave. If they have well-behaved kids, that's a really big clue that they can handle. If the kids are wild, that usually tells me that Maybe they're not so good at discipline and structure, and the Ridgeback might not be the thing for them. Send them to somewhere uh, else. Yeah, go get a beagle. <laughs> it won't bite you or anything, you know. Well, this has been a fascinating afternoon with uh, Bonnie and uh, Taylor and the Ridgeback family. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. It was wonderful to see you. And we'll have to have you back again. Okay, sure, anytime. Love to have you back. And we'll talk about Westminster. Sounds good.